Hello, Suni. I've been looking forward to this. In my opinion, the best of the MacV SOGs. The OG, the first. Yeah, 6619-8280. I, I didn't quite have that number in my head. Oh, that's original. See this original green Diny Loom? And it's the same, it's the same kind of gray, as you'll notice, as the 62 MAS which, as we know, had a, generally had a Dyne-made dial. Uh, because this kind of gray, I don't think Sua ever used this specific kind of gray too much. I could be wrong. Look at the loom, man. It's so nice. Um, I can clean up your original loom. Uh, if it is, if the hands are really wasted... Like, if we lose a lot of plating around it, um, I do have a set of replacement original hands, I believe, with original loom. I'd have to see if I still have them. I love the 6619s. And these are because the, the next model, the 6119s, they had a uh, the that was the the they had a um, base metal case and it just rotted. This is stainless steel. The six six one nine movements were sort of Seiko's workhorse before they uh, started producing the seven thousand series. They sold them to you know other companies and stuff like that. People have forgotten about them because they are they're relatively speaking low beat but they're really accurate and strong. Okay, where's my cutout? Ooh, this has been opened a couple times. There's the, there's the bezel cutout, but look how dirty it is. Somebody was having fun with this. They got a scratch on it. There is this, it's definitely been opened more than once, but that's not a surprise. Okay, baby, let's see what we got. November 66. Good serial number two. Three digit. Hey, look at that. There's your keyspec seal. I don't know if that's a date. I don't think so. That looks like a... Uh, that kind of looks like the character for house, but I don't know if that's true. In any case... Your case, case ceiling surfaces, whoops. Your case ceiling surfaces look pretty good. There's a little bit of pitting in here. But that that's pretty minor. Same with this. This is one of these, the movement ring backs up against the case, the snap-on. And the ceiling surface is just this, this outer shape, this outer shelf. But it works, obviously. Okay. I was going to go over there. I am excited. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. Everybody's excited. It's a great day. It is a great, great day. Yeah, they have this orange infilling, just like the 62 MAS movements. Okay. Let's 
let's do it. There's no excuse not to. Come on, baby. There we go. Oops. Yeah, your weight's in good condition. These alloy weights don't uh, don't take kindly to water. So these 6619s, I mean, they are they have a fully jeweled train. They're not the fastest beat in the world, but they're very steady. They've got some peculiarities. I'll talk about that. This, this setup here was to help Seiko avoid having to make two different parts for this. So they had this washer. But then they decided that was stupid, and they went ahead and made, for the 6000 series, two different kinds of ratchet wheels. One flat, and one that sort of upped in the middle. But this is, this is what it start, started with originally. That is not the, probably the right way to do that. Probably people are like, why don't you have the movement out? I have, I don't know, this is the way that I do it. It's habit, it's muscle memory. And so far it not has not led me into the dark valley of watch mistakes. Now, there's our crown. Yeah, all flattened. Yeah, this is old school enough that in order to get the dial and everything off, you've got to pull the casing screws. Ugh. Damn it. It's always tricky, these casing screws. But at this point, Seiko is using a system not too dissimilar from Rolex. And like Rolex, it has a cutout for you to unscrew and then pull the ring without having to remove those diddlies, which is awesome.
and uh, talking about, you know, similarities to Rolex, this is Rolex style sort of puffy loom printed directly on the dial. You know, it's rare for me to see these with a kanji English day wheel. Normally I don't, normally it's English. I'd love to get one of these that has the kanji wheel. That'd be awesome. Okay, I gotta get the hands off. Okay, got your hands. They are, you know. I think we might have a little, little bit of plating damage. I'll clean them the, my normal way, my first preliminary, and I'll look at the plating. Oh, it's a wee bit bent. I can straighten that. And that one is also just a bit bent down right at the collar. Again, I can I can deal with that. Looks nice. That surface is just awesome. It looks a lot lighter here because of the way my stupid lights are set up. But there you go. Look at that gloss reflection. All right. Let me get that dialogue. These are definitely old school in terms of the way that they're built. Like the 62 MAS, and uh, there you have to actually build back the front backwards off the dial. Like you, you can't complete this and test everything. The dial is an integral part of the calendar. Our date here. There you go. Six zero. Let me put this over here. Yeah, so because that you, you're gonna have things like warp springs. Don't don't lose that. I mean they're not hard to find, but if you don't have it, it's kind of annoying. What did you get out out? Out! Yeah, there's no, you know, C-clip or anything that goes with this. Old enough, too, that it's got, you know, shepherd's crook springs like that. Tiny, 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 super easy to lose. These jewels are there for decoration more than anything. In theory, they're supposed to make it easier for the day wheel to turn, but I think that's just silliness. Okay, let's. Uh, we got a little bit of, little bit of corrosion. A little is it? Nope, and just some, just some schmutz. Never mind. False alarm, everybody. You're gonna hear some shouting.
there's old grease on there and like some kind of somebody was going crazy with the oil Good. Ratchet wheel. Yep, this is the, that's the system that Seiko abandoned after this, making one stamped part instead of one stamped and one multi-machined. I mean, they still had the screw though. Mm -hmm. clean that by hand. Here is another one of these crazy little shepherd's crooks. This is the click. Look at the size of that thing. Always fun if you're ever going to see something go kapoink off into the distance. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. The jewels look good. Now this is something that people forget about or they lose. Do you see that little teeny tiny There's an incredibly small washer right here. It goes around that and on top of the center wheel bridge right there. People often lose those because they don't know they're there. And you'll have all kinds of issues if that piece is not there because the center wheel has a huge effect on amplitude and accuracy. Open that up in a second.
out why they didn't jewel the center wheel. Hmm. I'm not 100% impressed with that. Okay, I'm going to flip this over now. Let's get the date dial guard off. Now, the date dial guard is where the that's next crazy little um, shepherd's crook spring is, the one that's easiest to lose. <laughs> it, it popped out. It, it's you really got to be careful with these. There it is. I see it. Anyway, I've got more. They're really, really, really easy easy to lose. And uh, the other way you can do it is to grab it and then pull it out of the thing. In fact, you don't put the spring back in until this is screwed on, and then you slide it back in there. But I've got it. It's over here. Here's yet another shepherd's crook. Another separate part that just went flying. Ah, it's in my lap. There it is. There it is. There that is. Clicky thingy. So Seiko went and they made those, those two parts one part out of a stamped metal. And that, I'm sure, was a savings. This same structure is in all the 6000 series. That's where it came from. Oh man, it is gonna rain. There's the jumper for the day wheel. Again, a whole separate piece. Um, they went in later generations and they made the click just a spring thing on the stamped detail guard, which is is a better better solution. Certainly easier and cheaper to manufacture. That's like the 6000 series. I think those parts even exchange. Few more parts come off. 
Yeah, I see you. Come on. Get the keyless works part. Come on, come on, you. Come on. Ah, there we go. That's a clean system. That's showing Seiko getting closer to simplifying and unifying a lot of these movement parts. Exactly right. And there is your main plate. I'm leaving this on here because there's no reason for it to come off. There's your main spring barrel. Mm -hmm. Square down, square up, teeth down, tsunami. Okay. And get your main spring out of there. Okay, I'll clean it and straighten it. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna clean everything, and uh, basically, I'm gonna go through reassembly, and then I'm gonna come back and tell stories. Uh, after this, I'm going to disassemble the case. Now, just a quick disassembly on the case. Where's my thingy? Aha. Okay, that right there is our cutout. Uh, it's already been done a few times. Come on, buddy. Let's do this thing. Well, no, it's going. For a second, I thought that he glued it in place, but thankfully that did not happen. I forgot this is a W-type crystal. So the way that works, hey, you got some corrosion on here. The usual thing. I'll have to work, I use little teeny tiny things like almost like dental tools. You have to manually remove that. Um, I mean, there are chemicals, I mean, evapo rust and stuff. People talk it up and it does okay, but I find that it just doesn't get into the really fine things. It's okay for a preliminary first step, but it's not what really does it. Same thing here. You're probably going to have a little bit, hit a, bit of pitting there. But the cool thing is, is that really shouldn't matter because the W crystals are outside. They sit on the outside of that ledge right there. And then this ring is really, really tight, so it's a hard tension fit. That's what that is. That's an old W crystal. I'm gonna have to hand clean all that stuff. But it's not bad, because look at your ceiling surface. That's this ring right here. See the shiny, shiny ring? 
that is your ceiling surface. So it's perfectly good. Okay, I'm gonna get to cleaning this while the movement is running. When I come back, um, it'll probably be when the movement is running. So I will see you on the other side. Okay, I did, I was looking at the case, I the case apart. I did find one thing that is a problem. I have a solution for it, but you need to know. Okay, this does happen sometimes with rust because it swells up because it's, it's in act adding oxygen, it gets larger and it can really do a number. Let's see if you can see this. Where is it? Ah, it's right there. Mm -hmm. See right there? It's cracked right through. And that happens. So, I would not use this case back. I would keep it with the watch. But I myself would recommend I can look through my case backs. And I have a lot of case backs. And find the closest, the one that will work. It will basically be just like this. It's not from this, it won't be from this model. I know for a fact I don't have any of this specific case number. But absolutely, it'll be a 6619, and it'll absolutely fit, and that'll keep your watch, you know, closed up and nice. Because especially if you're in any kind of a hot, humid environment, crack like that, you're going to start seeing problems with that loom, and we don't want to have that happen. So I'm going to replace that with the closest equivalent, and you'll get this back just like it is. Good morning, Sunith. So, there it is. You can see it is still running. I don't know what the numbers are, but let's, uh, let's see, maybe. I don't know what the specific lift angle is on these. They have, these things have a lot in common with the 6000 series. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna punt and put it at that same space. Try to do this so y'all can see it. There's a rock, ooh, rock isn't big enough. Jeez, my rock is completely too short. Damn, it's a neat rock though. Look at that. Isn't that a cool rock? Look at that rock. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so let's let's just criminy. Okay, let me try this. Your watch is right there. There it is. Let me zoom in on this. I have no idea what we're going to find. Oh, we're going to find that the thing falls over. Definitely got some clean lines. It's still looking a little ragged. But again, these things don't sit in my holder very well. Those are great numbers for overnight. I don't know. I'm going to want to go back in and check that. Make sure I don't have something funky in there. Any case, great numbers. Great accuracy. It's been running 20 hours. Again, I don't know what numbers we're going to get. No idea. I haven't looked at this. Well, that's good. Yeah, because I'm able to, with the movement upside down, the main plate is much easier to get a grip on. Which means you can hear it more better. I need to tighten up that beat error a bit. But that is good. Yo, 
yeah, those are great numbers. And this thing's been running, like I said, for about 20 hours. Those are great numbers. I wish more people knew about the 6619s. I mean, they're not the, you know, they're not a high beat movement, but they don't need to be. High beat is kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of like a, it's an expensive option that is more for show, I think, than accuracy, because these things are ridiculously accurate. Yeah, I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and get going. I do need to talk to you about your handset, but I'll do that later. Okay, let's talk about your handset. I've done an initial cleaning on these, so the loom that is wasn't as damaged before came cleaner a little bit more than the other sections that are really darkened. So, um, I'm going to, I don't want to push this too hard in order to deal with, um, corrosion like this serious without stripping the plating off the hands is tough. You might very well have some loss here, but I'm going to do everything that I can. Okay. So there's one. Your minute hand is going to be a little more challenging. You can see hand is tweaked. I can straighten it. That's not a problem. But your loom at the bend is a little delicate. Right there. If I can stop wiggling. Right there. So the problem is that I can't seal the loom until I finish cleaning it. But cleaning it may damage the loom more. I'm going to gamble and try to clean that up a bit. That's what I'd do is the, if these were mine. It's a delicate process, but I'll try. I'm not, I'm not going to push it. If I can't get the results I want, I, I'm not going to go nuts. Okay, well, we'll see how I do. I will follow up with you on that. And that is all. Okay, Sunith, here we are together again. We're getting good clean numbers. This has been running down since full power this morning. Mm. 10, 12 hours down. And it's just been sitting there. I'm very happy with your movement. If I can ever get this centered for you. Um, there, that is good. So you can see we are definitely looking beautiful and shiny and clean. Oops, didn't mean to get that. Here that is. Okay, cool. I'm happy with it so far. I'm going to pop the back on it and let's talk some more. Well, here we are. It's hard to get decent light. I've actually been fighting with this for a while to try and get you representative light so you can see what this thing actually looks like. Hey, Sunif. So the light I have in here is just terrible. And I cannot get a representative shot of your watch. It just, I mean, that's not bad. It's freaking maddening. Okay. Hi, Sunif. There she is. Beautiful watch. Best of the Mac V's, if you ask me. So, you can see that I was able to clean up the hand loom 
a little. It's definitely much, much better. I didn't want to push it any harder than this. I really didn't. Um, but as you can see, I was able to clean up the original loom very well, considering how damaged it was. But importantly, is I managed to not do any, I didn't remove any plating from around the windows. And that's really important. It's hard to do because this corrosion came from somewhere. And that somewhere is the metal that the hands is made from. That means you often lose plating, but not here. Your dial's good. Your movement's gorgeous. Case is great. Now, you will remember, this is your case back, okay? This one, this is your original case back. It's got a bunch of cracks because it got rust underneath your corrosion. And corrosion, because it combines with oxygen, it takes up more space because you're adding material or adding mass. And it does it very slowly and it can just crack the back apart. So there's one crack, there's another. There's the start of one right there. You can sometimes see it on the edge right there. See that little black mark right there? That's the start of a crack. These other two, you can actually see they went all the way through to the back. One, two. I have the ax on here, so I made sure I knew which one was yours. So, these 6619s had at least three different size case backs. This particular size is, I happen to have one. So this is not, obviously, hang on just one sec. It's not the same model as yours, but is it is the same era. It's for another model, 66197990, but it's perfectly clean inside. The ceiling surfaces are great. So what I have done is I've signed inside this case back, which goes with this watch, and I've signed inside the replacement case back with a note in there with this serial number. So even if there were, you know, heaven forfend some situation where the case backs got, you know, something like that, you will have the record of which one was which and which went where. It's a great watch. Best of the Mac V's. Uh, oh, the upper and lower mainspring armors I was able to repair. Jewels don't exist for those that I can find. So I repaired the, I well, I repaired them both. And it's running great. I mean, that's it. There's not much else to say. Getting the hands done, that was almost like a, that was like a solid afternoon of work. It's wild how much time that took. That and the repair of the upper and lower mainspring arbors, that took me a lot of work. There were little bits of corrosion in the case. Nothing major, nothing like that. Oh, on the hands, what I did do with the original loom is I went and I, first I repaired the hole here in this hand. And then I undercoated the hands with a with a mostly clear loom, but one that had just a little, little teeny tiny bit of um, loom powder and inert material to to make it look to strengthen up anything without having it look weird. Repairing the upper and lower mainspring arbor port that was again that was another full afternoon. I had to pull out everything out of my bag of tricks in order to make that happen. Your quick set works. Now on these six six one nines, they do not have a quick set day. They don't. Even, they don't even have like you can't rock and back and forth across midnight. You can't even do that. So if you're out of the day, wrong day of the week, you've got to go through, and you have to. You're going to have to push through over twenty four hours. Darn it! Over twenty four hours to get that next one to finish up. Sorry, I'm having trouble doing this. Let's just go like that.
I just like to make sure it goes through the whole cycle. Anyway, great watch. Ready for the next one. Okay, thank you, Sunith.